all doing well. So today I have my cup of eggnog here, my cute little Christmas mug. I also have ice in it too. And I'm going to sit down and I'm going to talk about my most anticipated reads for the year of 2024. These are all the books that I want to get into, the genres that I want to dabble in, and just like the authors that I am really just excited to read their work. So I hope that this video inspires you and I hope you're excited and let's get into it. Let's start high and mighty. The first book that I want to read in the year of 2024 is Love Redesigned by Lauren Asher. I've read Lauren Asher's work before. I've read the Dreamline Billionaire series and it is a series that I have just truly enjoyed. I love. So when I found out she was coming out with another book, I was like, okay, this, this needs to be on my CBR. If I'm not reading it this year, it's gotta be in 2024. So pretty much in Love Redesigned, we follow around two characters. We have Julian and Delilah. And these two have been childhood rivals, okay? And they find themselves in a situation where they're forced to work together and they have to do some sort of like renovation project. So Julian is initially determined to get rid of Delilah, but soon he realizes that his feelings have changed towards Delilah, you know? In Delilah's case, she's recovering from like a heartbreak because she was recently engaged, but then engagement was broken off. Right now, what her main focus is is the project that she's working on with Julian and kind of just focusing on like the financial component and aspect of this whole like renovation that's taking place. The more and more that we are going to read this novel, we are going to see the two of them try to navigate the years of denied attraction that they have for each other. And we are also going to see how the relationship between Julian and Delilah is going to get a little more complicated because they're their emotions are kind of all over the place because they like each other but they don't want to admit it. I guess just from reading the synopsis it's giving enemies to lovers. Now the next novel, Are We Surprised? It is an Abby Jimenez book and when I found out she was coming with a new book in the year of 2024, pre-order, add to cart, trust. I really want to read this book in the new year. So pretty much we follow around two characters. We are introduced to Justin and Emma. So Justin feels as though, for lack of better words, he is cursed because he just hasn't had the best experience with dating and he pretty much goes off on this big like whole dating dilemma rant I guess you could say on Reddit and then after this connects him with our next character which is Emma and Emma finds herself in the same boat so they're pretty much dealing with the same issue and they decide that you know what I think the best idea for the two of us is that we should date you know what I'm saying like let's have this little summer fling over in Minnesota and you know let's just try to distract ourselves and forget about the other problems that we are currently dealing with and let's just focus on what we have right now so pretty much in the process of the two of them going and having this little summer fling, they have to navigate a ton of unexpected circumstances and situations that they find themselves in. For instance, Justin has to become a guardian for his sibling and Emma has to deal with her toxic mother. And as they are grappling with the unforeseen circumstances, the, be the question begins to arise, could this be more than just a fleeting connection? or is this connection orchestrated by fate? I'm excited and really interested to see how Abby is going to write these characters. Another thing that I'm also interested to see is like the plot twist that is going to come in this book because I tend to find with a lot of her books there usually tends to be a pretty big twist somewhere in the middle of the novel so I'm interested to see how that's going to play out. For the most part I feel like this is going to be like a cute nice summer beachy read which I'm very excited for. I don't really think that she's written a novel that's been like that that's been centered around like the season of summer so I'm interested to see how this novel is going to play out but that is Just For The Summer by Abby Jimenez. Oh the next book when I saw that this book was coming out I was like oh my goodness I want to get my hands on it and it is The Poisoner's Throne by Holly Black. Now I do not have the synopsis on here because I have not finished reading the entire Folk of Air series and I definitely know that this um, follows like the storyline of the Folk of Air series. I don't want to read the synopsis because I don't want to get spoiled on what is taking place in the series but trust this is a series that I definitely do want to finish reading in the year of 2024. Next novel on my list is Not In Love by Alia Hazelwood. I love Alia Hazelwood's writing style. Her romance novels are so cute. When I found out she was coming out with another novel I was so excited and I feel like if you love science and romance and STEM and all that good stuff Alia Hazelwood is definitely an author that you need to check out. But pretty much for the synopsis of this novel, we follow around Rue Stevert and she is a successful biotech engineer and pretty much she faces some upheaval as the startup that she's working at, specifically the Klein startup, is being threatened by a hostile takeover that is led by Eli Kilgore. And despite the off limits um, of the nature of their connection, Rue and Eli have to succumb to an affair in which they have to balance the loyalties that they have to their companies. And also they have to, I guess, like navigate the undenied attraction that the two of them have for each other. And in this process, we're going to see that there are no secrets or no strings attached relationship has a deadline to 
tied to the outcome of the corporate battle, revealing that the matters of heart are unpredictable and may have lasting consequences. That is all I know so far about the novel. I'm interested to see if this novel is going to be a dual POV. I feel like it has the potential to be one. I don't think I've read a book by Ollie Hazelwood that has had a dual POV thus far. I mean, if it does have one, that'd be great. That'd be cool. That'd be amazing. But if it doesn't, I still feel like this will be a good novel. Two other novels that I really want to get into. I guess this is more so like series I want to complete and finish in the new year. The first one is in the Knockmount series. I started reading it this year. I definitely knew that it wasn't going to be a series that I was going to finish, but it's definitely one that I want to continue and finish in 2024. The next one is I would really love to finish the Dream on Billionaire series by Lauren Asher. It's been a book that I've been putting off for a very long time, which is The Final Offer. I think it's just because I have a strong feeling that I'm going to enjoy it. And it's also been a series that I've really, really, really liked. And it's going to kind of be bittersweet to read the last novel and to kind of close that chapter and to not like hear anything about the other characters. So there's also that as well. Oh, another series that I've been really wanting to, to get into is the Natural series by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. We have we follow around 17 year old Cassie who is gifted with the ability to read people's mind. When I was thinking about this, I honestly and automatically thought of Spy Family and Anya. So that was also kind of funny. Because she is so skilled, the FBI decided that they were going to recruit her into this classified program where there are a bunch of other exceptional teens that have all these cool supernatural abilities. And pretty much they are brought together to help solve a bunch of cold cases. This is giving criminal minds, it's giving spy vibes, I guess you could say. I really like this. This is really interesting. I read these first two lines and I was like, I, I have to get into this series. This sounds so cool. It's pretty much unaware of the risks. She joins the group of teens with unique abilities. And as they work together to crack cases, they discover that everyone in the naturals program has secrets, which I feel like this, again, as another layer or elements of, I guess, not interestingness, because that's not a word, but I don't know. I felt like this was more intriguing to me because I was like, oh, secrets? I want to know what they're hiding. I really do. When the new killer emerges, the group is to thrust into the dangerous game of cat and mouse, relying on their extraordinary gifts to survive. So that is pretty much the premise and the synopsis of the first novel in the Natural series. I've seen so many people talk about the series by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, and I haven't read anything by her. Don't no, and I'm not familiar like with her writing style, but honestly, just based off the synopsis of this novel, I really, really, really do want to read this book because it sounds really interesting and it sounds really cool. I've been seeing this book all over TikTok. People have had mixed opinions, but for the most part, it's been known as a sad book, and it's Little Life by Yania Yanagahara. And oh my goodness, I really want to get into this book. We follow around four college friends who move to New York in the pursuit of seeking fame and just wanting to pursue a successful life. And the relationship revolves or we're going to see like their the relationship evolve over the next few years and themes such as addiction, achievement and pride are going to I guess like come about or we're going to see them play out in this friendship. And pretty much the central person in this friend group is Jude. And Jude is this brilliant, mysterious man who has been scarred by a lot of childhood trauma. And this novel is going to explore the deepening bonds of their brotherhood. I guess this novel is going to show the depiction of the families that we are born into and the ones that we choose to create ourselves. Just right off the bat reading this novel, I definitely gives off the vibe that it's going to be more of an emotional read. I definitely have seen the like novel in like the paperback copy. It looks relatively thick, so it's definitely going to be a longer read. But it's definitely one that I really am excited to read. I feel like this novel is going to be insightful. I feel like I might be able to learn something or take away from this novel. And I feel like just based off of the synopsis, I feel like it's going to be written in a perspective in which I'll be able to view light from a different lens. I'm interested to see how these different topics of like achievement, addiction, and pride, and like childhood trauma are just going to be written and played out. The next novel that I am really interested and excited to read is Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I've been seeing this book all over TikTok. So many people on booktube have been talking about it. So pretty much we are introduced to the kingdom of Lyle and in this kingdom there are only two people or two classes of people that matter and have value. You have the extraordinaries and you also have the elites. If you do not fit within these two categories you according to their standards are of no value and you do not deserve to live and to be a part of this society. So the character that we were introduced to is Pete and Gray and she is known as what you would say or classified as an ordinary um, which are pretty much people that do not have powers. Well I'm assuming that they're all people but it's pretty much an individual that does not have powers um, or does not have any special powers in this case. 
and pretty much she decides that in order for her to survive she's going to pretend to be a psychic so clearly that doesn't really work out um so she decides that because of her lack of abilities she's going to become a thief out of necessity to help herself survive and live in the process of her being in her like thief era i guess you could say um she unexpectedly saves one of the lyle princes and because of this she is thrusted into the purging trials which is pretty much a competition in which the elites have the ability to showcase their powers and i'm assuming because they have this competition like if you're an elite and you have like really special profound like strong powers you can maybe like gain status because peden is now in the purging trials she's obviously struggling because she's an ordinary and she doesn't have powers so if she doesn't have powers what the heck is she gonna showcase at this trial and because of this she's having a hard time concealing and covering up her true identity as an ordinary and we see that Peden is faced with the challenges of not only being in the trials but also her growing feelings for one of the princes. She also realizes that she is in danger because if people do find out her true identity and find out that she is an ordinary it will not only cost her the trials but also the matters of the heart meaning that the prince might not really want to associate or be with her if he finds out that he she is an ordinary. The synopsis of this novel is kind of interesting when I read this it honestly reminded me a little of the Folk of Air series with Jude because in that series Jude is like a human and she doesn't have power she doesn't have special abilities and everybody looks down on her but um because of her like ambitious character she finds a way to like rise to the top and like achieve great things and just be this amazing determined adventurous woman so I think that might be something that we might see in Powerless with Pete and Grey but I guess we're gonna have to read the novel to find out ourselves. And the next novel that I have is In Five Years by Rebecca Serrell. Pretty much in this novel we are introduced to Danny Cohan and she was a woman that loves to meticulously plan out her life and she experiences a surreal twist in which she wakes up in a different apartment with a different engagement ring next to a completely different man and when I read this my mind initially went to the seven year slip because it kind of falls around the same premise sort of to a certain extent but they both kind of like deal with like the time travel element I guess you could say or time switch but back to what I was saying this strange occurrence lasts precisely for one hour and it projects her five years into the future and then she returns back to her normal life but she still can't forget about this one hour like life experience that she had and it begins to challenge her expectations and pretty much unraveling an unexpected love story in five years explores the unforeseen turns of fate and a tale that goes beyond what is anticipated i feel like just pretty much by the synopsis of this novel i feel like maybe our main character danny is going to come to the realization that like maybe it's not the healthiest and it's not good to try to like plan and control everything that takes place in her life and I feel like that's the type of person or character that she will be. So I really hope that we get to see kind of like that transformation or that character change um, throughout the storyline with Danny. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Jane Can Read. I remember when this was all over book talk I think back in like 2021 2022 I didn't get around to reading it but it definitely is a book that I want to read in this next year or in the new year so pretty much this novel falls around the aging Hollywood icon Evelyn Hugo and she decides that she is going to reveal the truth about her scandalous life she picks um, Monique Grant and she is an unknown magazine reporter and she is pretty much going to be the one that's going to write Evelyn's biography so as Monique listens to Evelyn's captivating story spanning between 1950s or the 1950s to 1980 detailing her ruthless ambition unexpected friendships and forbidden love she finds an unexpected connection with this legendary star however as Evelyn's tale unfolds it becomes apparent that their lives are tragically intertwined in an irreversible way so pretty much this novel explores the splendor of old Hollywood and the harsh realities of the present devailing into the cost of meeting and facing the truth. To be honest, I don't really know anything else that anybody has said about this novel. I've just heard that people have enjoyed it. So going into it, I'm going to be interested to see if it's going to be a novel that I'm going to enjoy myself as well. The next novel is The Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams. Even looking at the synopsis of this, there were some words on here that I didn't even know existed. The Dictionary of Lost Words falls around Esme who is born into the world of words and she grows up in this place or in this area called Scriptorium and this is where her father and the lexicographers are compelling the Oxford English Dictionary. So Esme begins to discover that there are a lot of discarded words that aren't going to end up in this dictionary and this sparks her to go on this quest where she decides that she's going to create her own dictionary made up of all of these lost words. Esme decides that she is going to venture beyond the university and uncover words that are reflecting women's and commoners or common folks experiences that are often neglected by the official dictionary. So this book is set up during the women's suffrage, so around World War One, 
and the novel reveals the narrative hidden in the margins of history that is predominantly written by men, and this book is actually inspired by actual events that draw from the Oxford English Dictionary archives, and the story is a delightful, lyrical, and thought-provoking celebration of words and the profound influence of language on the world. I said this year I really want to get into some historical fiction and I feel like this is definitely going to be a really interesting and insightful book. I just really love Esme's perspective on wanting to learn more about these words and wanting to learn about the stories and just hear the voices of people that were very overlooked in society at this time, especially in World War One. It's also going to be really interesting because this, I just reading the premises and the synopsis of this book, this has nothing to do with romance or anything of that sort. So I'm very excited to read this and hopefully I can learn something insightful about this novel. The next novel is a historical fiction by Anthony Doerr and it's All the Light We Cannot See. So this novel is set up during World War II and we follow around Marie Laura who lives in Paris and as the Nazis occupy the city, she and her father try to escape the wall citadel of Saint Marlo carrying vulnerable and dangerous jewels from the Museum of the Natural history. Meanwhile, our second character, Warren Fenning, is an orphan in Germany and he develops the skill of being able to fix radios. So pretty much he gets enlisted in tracking down the residents and I think this is referring to Marie, Laura, and her father. Pretty much in this story, it's going to intricately weave the lives of Marie, Laura, and Warren, highlighting the struggles that people face during war times and how people strive to be good or kind to one another in these chaotic periods of time, I guess you could say. And with the stunning physical details and the beautiful metaphors, the author Anthony Doerr crafts a deeply moving narrative that spans decades ultimately delivering a magnificent and unforgettable story. I really don't have too much to say about this but again I'm not really familiar with the area or the genre of historical fiction or like literary fiction so I'm excited to read this book and it's gonna be interesting because the previous book that I talked about The Dictionary of Lost Words was set up in World War One, and this one is set up in World War Two. so it's gonna be interesting to like read and hear a little bit about like the history and what it was like growing up or being present in that time period. The next book is A Man Called Ode by Frederick Backman. I've heard a lot of people talk about this novel and pretty much the synopsis, it describes Ove and he is an exceedingly grumpy man who receives everyone around him as being incompetent. And despite his irritable exterior, Ove has a dedication to sharpening the world according to his beliefs. The synopsis hints that beneath his gruffy exterior, there's something about Ove that is proven to be irresistible. So I guess you could say you have to kind of just read the book to find out more about Ove's character and to see his perspective on the way that he views the world. I really do love reading books that allow you to view life and like the world from a different perspective or from a different, yeah, I guess you could say from somebody else's perspective. And I feel like this book might be something that is going to be really insightful. And I really hope that I can learn something from all of, I guess you could say, um, and his character and kind of just his personality and who he is. The sun is going down. But this last novel that I want to read is very different from the other ones because it is a nonfiction novel and it's also an autobiography. And it's called When a Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. It's pretty much at the age of 36, on the brink of completing a decade's worth of neurological training, Paul Kalanithi receives a devastating diagnosis of stage four lung cancer. And pretty much we're going to read as he goes from the transition of becoming a doctor that is treating the dying to a patient that is struggling to live. And Kalanithi pretty much envisioned this entire life that he would spend with his wife. And it's obviously abruptly shattered when he receives this diagnosis. When Breath Becomes Air details a profound transformation, grappling the question about the meaning of life when faced with death. Pretty much honestly, just from reading the synopsis of this novel, I definitely know that it's going to be more of a heartfelt read. I'm going to be really interested to see and hear Paul's like perspective and everything that he was going through. Because I'm not going to lie, a transition from going to like being like a neurosurgeon and a doctor and helping people that are dying and people that have terminal illnesses and diseases to becoming that very person is definitely a big shift and I definitely can tell that you almost have a sense of like imposter syndrome and you can feel really helpless in that situation so I'm interested really to read about how like he navigates everything and just in seeing like the writing style of this novel and I don't know, I feel like this is going to be a really good read and a really insightful read, so I'm very excited for that. So the sun has went down. It's literally only four. It's not even four yet. It's literally 349, okay? That is ridiculous and that is crazy. But those are all of the books or some of the books that I really, really, really want to get to in 2020. Four. Again, really tried to be intentional with picking books from different genres, especially from different authors that I hadn't read before. I feel like I have a pretty good solid list of books that I want to read and I'm going to be so excited to make reading vlogs about all these books and bring you guys along the process. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys again next time. Bye!